Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to try Home Assistant Assist, which is a brand new feature. We're going to find out how it works out of the box, but we're also going to be customizing it, creating our own intentions and creating our own custom phrases. Very quickly, let me explain to you what Home Assist is. If you recently updated your Home Assistant instance, you should find this little speech box. You can ask it things like turn the lights on and what's the status of certain devices. For example, I can say turn on the iMac lamp and you can see that it turned on the light right behind the dashboard just here. I can also tell it to turn the light off. So I just have to go turn off the iMac lamp. It also uses different type of words. So you can say activate iMac lamp and you can see that that works and you can also do deactivate to turn things off. But if you try to do things a bit more evoluted than this, you're gonna need some custom components. Home Assistant introduced another way for us to communicate with our smart home devices because this is all in preparation for a lot of work with voice. The way voice assistants work in a really rudimentary way is that you, it records your audio, it transcodes that into text and then the text gets passed against an engine and then basically there's what we're calling in this context an intent is expressed. So Home Assistant is trying to understand what you actually want to do as a user. Now know that if you're not a developer you might get scared when you see GitHub and code but sometimes it's actually useful to look at the code if you do understand it. I'm going to walk you through like in just 30 seconds how this actually works. First the sentences. So under the sentences folder you will see different language codes. These are the languages that are currently available at the time of recording. So I'm going to go for EN which is English. Inside the languages you can see the YAML files. These are configuration files and you can see they're organized in a certain way. Binary, climate, cover, fan. You'll recognize these names as being domains in Home Assistant. There's a common.yaml gives you a list of the possibilities of what the assistant currently understands. This will change obviously with each Home Assistant release. You can see for example lists and color we have values. These are all of the values that are currently recognized by the list. So if you try and type in a color that's not recognized in this list then you'll struggle with that. You have the options for brightness, temperature, temperature unit, brightness, level um, and it actually explains it like for example that 100 is the maximum. So you might think that brightness 255 is the maximum, but actually by looking at what the code is saying, the maximum is at 100 and minimum is one. You have on and off states, on and off domains. So let's go back a step. Let's look at one of the ones that we're gonna be uh, looking to customize, which is the light has turn on dot YAML. If we click on it, you can actually see how this is structured. The first thing you need to always specify the language. In this example, it's English. Then we are uh, we use the intents. So this has turn on is an intent. And you can see the structure we uh, under the intent, which is indented, we have data and we have several sentences. So these are the sentences that currently work. So turn is what we've seen earlier. And we know also activate works according to this list. But if there are other ways to um, in the English language, then they could be added here in future releases. And then we have the domain, which is light. So we understand that this is uh, specifically tailored for lights because it's the light underscore has turn on YAML configuration file. So with that said, let's jump into Home Assistant and let's see how we can customize things for ourselves. To customize things, you're going to need an add-on, either the file editor or Visual Studio Code. Inside the file editor, let's say for example, you go into the file system and you look for a folder called custom underscore sentences. You're probably not going to find it unless you've already done this previously. So you're going to need just to create it. To create a folder, you just click on new folder, you just punch in the name, click OK. Once you've done the folder, go inside the folder and then you can pick your own language code. So EN for English, IT, Italian, ES, Spanish and so forth. So you create the folder same way inside here. Inside the folder, you'll place your YAML files. These are the files that you're gonna place in 
to actually uh, do certain things. So first thing, one that I want you to look at is the on underscore off dot yaml. You'll find all of this code in the blog, which is linked in the description down below. And if you're also brand, brand new to Home Assistant and you're struggling to follow, there's a free 45 minute Home Assistant course, which will get you up and running so you can understand some of the fundamental concepts, which I'm assuming that you already know if you're watching this video. So let's carry on. On and off dot yaml. What, how this works is uh, pretty straightforward. What I'm actually doing, I'm introducing a new way to turn things on and off. I'm using an Italian phrase, an Italian expression, because our family is bilingual, so we use both interchangeably. And I don't want to change the language setting every time I want to talk to a home assistant in a different language. So this quite, could be a quite common use case, but you can pretty, pretty much implement any phrase. So the intent, there are two intents. There's the has turn on intent, which is from line four to line nine, and then the has turn off intent. So that's uh, when you want to turn something off and the other one is when you turn something on. So I'm specifically looking at one entity, ID, just to test. You can then generalize this and you'll see in the blog how I've actually done that. You can uh, basically generalize it and, and use tags. So you can use any entity um, and not a specific one that you're using. So you put the, the phrase here, there's an optional phrase. Uh, so this, this is the, uh, but you could change this in, uh, in the uh, article, basically in, in your own language or whatever you're doing. So keep it as it is for now. Um, and, and that's it really. So now if I use this expression, I'm able to turn things on and off and I'll, and I'll give, give you a demo of this. When you actually build this, you need to uh, reload your configuration or restart Home Assistant if you find that doesn't work for you. So we go go back to our iMac clamp, you see it's on at the moment, we go back to our assistant, and we're gonna say Spegni, which is Italian for turn off, and we're gonna say iMac clamp, and you can see that instantly turned it off. I can go a chain D, iMac clamp, and that works too. If you were to try the same thing without putting that code in, you'll see it failing, and you'll see something like, say for example, with a random text, you'll get like, sorry, I couldn't understand that. That's the default response that you would get from host system. Jumping back onto the intense repository. Um, so these are the sentences. So the sentences are your input. So this is what we, me and you are writing to the assistant, but our responses, which come under the responses folder, and these are obviously split by language. So the assistant will reply to you in the language that you've set it to reply. Um, you can see that, for example, has turn on dot yaml. When that intent is used, then we will get a specific response. So we'll get the default response is turned on. So it'll tell you turned on, and then it will use state dot domain, which is basically uh, whatever we turned on. So we will say turned on, and this will be light would be state the state dot domain uh, templating expression that you can see used at line five in the code. And then there are other examples like if you're using an area or a fan, or if you're doing a cover, or cover device, uh, scene, a script, unlock. So you can see the different scenarios and there's like different responses depending on what you are turning on. So this is like a generic turn on YAML that covers everything. The previous one we saw was more for uh, a light, light only. So these are the responses. Now I can't remember where I found it, but previously there was somewhere where you can actually find the generic um, response. So if I just, pretty much copy this, sorry I couldn't understand that, and I were to search it in the repository. Yeah, okay, we found it. So you can see that in the common.yaml under the English language, so if I will just go into here, you can see that no intent. This means that Home Assistant or Home Assistant Assist was not able to understand your intention because it didn't understand the sentence that you uh, gave it as an input. So it will tell you, sorry I couldn't understand that and that's your default answer. You have some other default answers in terms of the errors. So no area, no domain, no device, no entity and handle error. So this is sort of how it works. If you're getting value out of this video, remember to like and comment in the section down below if this is um, making your understanding of Home Assistant Assist uh, better. We're not finished here. So we've got uh, one more thing I wanna show you how to do this. So I'm going to be creating a custom phrase. The custom phrase is basically going to allow me to just say anything I want and then get a, a response back. So let's say I want to know, is the fridge 
open or I can say is the fridge open or closed and now we've got a response the fridge is off which basically means the fridge is closed so how did I actually get that this setup if you try this yourself even if you have a fridge sensor or something it, it was not going to work and I'm going to show you how you can use this custom phrase so go if you follow the video through and you haven't skipped so I'll quickly repeat what you need to do to get this set up so you're back to your file editor again in the same folder that we created previously but if you skip the head a uh, quick recap custom sentences and en which is your language in here you'll create a file it doesn't matter how you call the file I'm calling it fridge.yaml as an example in this file you're going to have similar contents to what we had before we have a language and we have intents so this is pretty much similar but this is a um, made up name right so custom fridge sensor something that I have created because it's relevant to um, what I'm doing over here and then the data that I am passing is uh, specific sentences for example is the fridge open or closed can I eat food from the fridge whatever 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 basically so once you've created this you would save this then go to your configuration.yaml so you go step back a few folders click on configuration.yaml and then somewhere in here you want to add something like this lines 46 to 49 but again you'll find this in the blog and and you've got to put intent script to uh, spaces custom fridge sensor the speech and the text the text is the response so this is what a home assistant is gonna reply back to us when we type that in so we're gonna say the fridge is which is a standard text and we're just gonna get the status of the binary sensor of the fridge door so if we had like a temperature sensor we could say oh what's the uh, state of the temperature sensor and, and we can get like what's the status of the fridge or the CPU or basically anything that you want and this is how you can create your own custom phrases with Home Assistant Assist. I hope you've enjoyed this video if you want to find out more about my latest automations I click this video over here remember to like subscribe and comment in the section down below about custom phrases and sentences that you want to build with Home Assistant Assist. See you in the next one. Ciao!